Hi, good evening. Hi, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Hi, good evening, Carla. Good evening, good evening teacher. Good evening, Carlos. How are you doing today? I'm fine. How was your day? Today is Wednesday. It's like a, like a little Friday. <laughs> I love Wednesdays. <laughs> How was your day? I'm very tired. Tired? A lot of work. And travel to Agua Japan, uh, Sansonate, uh, return to Santa Ana. Very late. Oh, and and the traffic. What about the traffic? Yes, the traffic is the principal problem. Yeah, it's the main problem. Then that way, yeah, I know. But fortunately, yes, the day is almost over, so soon you will have time to rest. And I hope that you sleep well today. <laughs> yes, I I'm in home. We are taking a class. And yesterday, don't take the class. Normally, I I drive all the night. Oh, I understand. Sorry to hear that. But yes, today seems like a little bit better than yesterday, right? Yes. Okay, awesome. Nice to hear that. And the rest of you, how is your day? But I hope that you have had a very good day. Um, so, do you remember what was the last thing that we did yesterday in class? Uh, our review of uh, the Monday's topic, the Monday's topic, uh, uh, feeling, uh, ¿cómo se llama? Uh, Para trabajar. Job. Application form. Yes, an application form. <laughs> yes, we. Uh, yes, that was the last activity. Thank you so much, Carla. That was the last activity that we did in yesterday's class. We filled out a job application form, and we were practicing some questions. And what about the platform? Did you complete the platform in that uh, exercise the number four, which is related to the? Uh, job application form? Uh, yes, I did it. Oh, you did it? Nice. Yeah. Okay. I completed the all session one. Awesome. Perfect. Today is the deadline to complete it. Okay. So that is good of you to complete it. And I hope that the rest of the class is on the same page. <laughs> what about the rest? Have you completed the section one? Today is the deadline. So we're going to run a report uh, probably today at midnight or tomorrow in the morning. So uh, a report is going to be run and you have to have the at least section one fully completed. And remember that the minimum is an 80%. And you can correct the exercises in case that there's any mistake. So yes. Now let us check in number one, it says uh, item one, it's part of a job application, Facebook account, telephone number, or nickname. What do you think? Mm, telephone number. Telephone number. Yeah, telephone number. Uh, it's part of employment history, name of the company, date of birth, or name of the last relationship. Name of the company. Name of the company. Okay. Number three, it's mandatory to write in an application form the proof type, signature, or friends. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's not necessary to write in a job application family members age or education family members family member. okay family members now five it's mandatory to write in an application form 
education, friends, or car brand? Education. Education. Let's check. Okay, all the answers are correct. We got 20 out of 20. It, it was a piece of cake, right? <laughs> that was pretty easy. Okay, good that you complete that part and I hope that everybody has done that exercise and also the number five. Uh, like an hour ago, I sent you the, the guide for today's class and this is our class number five. So it's the first week of classes being completed. And do remember, complete the platform section one. Now, for today, we, we have done this part. We reviewed yesterday class and we have completed homework number four successfully. Now, we're going to uh, before we continue with today's class, we're going to discuss uh, vocabulary that is going to be useful for us in the next exercise. So look at the picture. What is that? Can you tell me? What, what do you see in that picture? What is that? Un Klingon. I'm sorry, can you repeat it? Klingon. A Klingon. <laughs> okay, and what is that? Can you describe what is a Klingon? It's not a human, right? It's, it's, an alien? it's like an alien. Okay. It's a humanoid. Uh, Humanoide in Spanish, okay. And what are the characteristics of, um, or the personality traits of a humanoide or a Klingon? Rudeness and rudeness are similar of the human, but uh, some difference in the body. Okay, so there are some different physical difference. Yes. Okay, and about personality. More or less the same. Ah, uh, you think it's the same? Mm. Okay. And uh, yes, more, it's part of, more of the vocabulary. Intelligent. <laughs> oh, yes. more intelligent. Uh, that can be okay. So. What's the meaning of clean on? Can somebody write the, sorry, can somebody read the definition of clean on? A volunteer to read? Voy a leer yo. Okay, thank you so much, Carlos. Okay, this is developed by screenwriter Jean Elkon in 1960. Seven for the original Star Trek COEs series. Key Klingons were worthy, humanized, characterized by prideful, roadless, roadlessness, and brutally. Uh, Klingons practice uh, feudalism and authoritarianism with a warrior cast uh, relying on slave labor. Okay, thank you so much for reading that for us, Carlos. As you can see about the personality or the personality trait of a kingdom, they are, mm, there are some humans that <laughs> have those personality traits. Cuando decimos traits, se lo voy a escribir aquí en el chat. A veces le preguntan a uno en las entrevistas. Personality traits. Si alguna vez a ustedes les preguntan, ahí se los escribí en el chat. Personality traits. ¿Ya han escuchado eso antes? Personality traits. 
se refiere a, a los rasgos de su personalidad. Cuando le pregunten, what are your personality traits? Or can you mention uh, your personality traits? Entonces, usted tiene que hablar de describir de su personalidad. Como por ejemplo, ¿qué adjetivos podemos utilizar para describir nuestra personalidad, nuestros rasgos personales? Patient. Oh, patient. Uh -huh. mm, kind. Kind. Okay. Responsible. Mm. Yeah. Respectful. Uh -huh. Respectful. Uh -huh. All those are positive. Uh -huh. Normalmente mencionamos los positivos, ¿verdad? <laughs> Obi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially if it's for a job interview. <laughs> Okay, so yes, but as you can see, the personality mm -hmm. traits of a king, they said authoritarianism with a warrior caster relying on slave labor. Okay, and it says characterized by prideful, rudeness, and brutality. So some authoritarios, some rudos, and some brutales. So it, it's Nothing positive, right? <laughs> but yes, there are some humans that has those like personality traits as well. That's not good. But okay, so that's one of the uh, or a couple of characteristics of uh, the, uh, the personality of a Klingon. Now, let's see the next word that we have for vocabulary tonight is managerial. Managerial. Can somebody read what this managerial refers to? A volunteer? Managerial. I can do it. Thank you so much, Carla. Okay, managerial relating to managers or management. Mm -hmm. Those who want to move into a managerial position are offered training and mentoring. Previous managerial experience will be required for this post. She has developed critical, technical, and managerial skills. His managerial style has been described as a collaborative. Collaborative, okay, excellent. Thank you so much for reading, Carla. So as you can see, is managerial is, is relacionado a lo gerencial, al manejo de personas. So it's is management. Y aquí tenemos uh, cuatro ejemplos en donde la palabra managerial has been used. Is it clear the meaning of those two words, uh, clean on and managerial? Mm, yes. Yes. Okay, so we can move to the next slide. We have proficient. Proficient. It's like shh, shh. No, como che de chino es shh, como shh. Like silent. Proficient. Proficient. Okay, what's the meaning of proficient? Can somebody read that part for us? What is the meaning of proficient? A volunteer to read? Good at doing something because of practice. Continue. Uh -huh. Yes, okay. please. Skill. Skilled, skilled and experienced, experienced, a proficient swimmer. She's proficient in two languages. It takes a couple of years of regular driving before you become proficient at it. Excellent, Carla. Well done. Thank you so much for helping us. And uh, congratulations, Carla, because uh, I have seen that you corrected yourself. Se corrigió usted misma en las pronunciación con el ED. Excellent. So it means that you are aware. Están aprendiendo y la práctica les hace incluso corregirse a ustedes mismos, which is excellent. Thank you so much. So what would be proficient? ¿Está claro el significado de proficient? 
good at doing it. Clear. Yeah, because of the experience. Okay. Entonces es como eh, habilidoso, eficiente, es bueno haciendo algo porque lo ha practicado mucho. Entonces, that's the meaning of proficient. Now, the next word that we have is encourage. 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 I volunteer to read the definition in the example word encourage. Janet, thank you so much. Encourage to help someone to feel confidence, 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 and able to do something or to give advice to someone to do something. Our experience always in encourage us to ask questions. Question. Questions. Questions. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much, Janet. So, yes, encourage. It's like shh, at the end, encourage. Y la primera E casi suena entre E y. Encourage. Encourage. Everybody, you can practice at home. Encourage. Encourage. Excellent. Okay, so uh, is this clear? Está claro que es encourage. Encourage, como no me dicen nada, no sé si es porque sí o porque no. <laughs> encourage es uh, como animar a alguien a hacer algo. Animar, motivar. Es similar a motivate. Uh -huh. Animar a alguien a hacer algo. Empujarlo, darle ese empuje. Um, so that is encourage. Okay. Now, instead, instead, la A no se pronuncia. Instead, instead, instead. Okay. Mm, I volunteer to read the meaning, the definition, and the example for instead. Me. Thank you, Julissa. Instead, in place of some or something else, there's no coffee. Will you like a cup of tea instead? Excellent. Thank you so much, Julissa. So is this clear the meaning of instead? Is it clear? In place of someone or something else. Is yes, teacher. Okay. As in this case, we have the next word, which is pontificate. Pontificate. What is pontificate? Can somebody read the definition? You can raise your hand. No volunteers? Me? Uh, okay, thank you so much, Hazel. Pontificate, to speak in an important ma uh, manner. manner has as, as, as if only your option was correct. Your opinion was correct. Oh, sorry. Uh -huh. He should look at the problem before pontificating. Upon, upon it. Upon it. Okay, thank you so much for reading, Hazel. Is that the meaning of pontificate? When you pontificate, is it that you, uh, you speak or you give your opinion, like in uh, if it's if as if just your opinion is the correct option. So, what is pontificate? Prepotent. 
Y es, Isa, ajá, es como imponer su opinión o su punto. Uh -huh. Yes. Es like, ajá, uh -huh. dar su punto, pero como si esto es. Esta es verdad única, ¿verdad? That is to pontificate. Okay. So, before we go and proceed with the reading, I'm going to check attendance. Let's see. I just have 17. It is 820. Okay. So, we're going to stop for a while and check attendance first. And then we will continue with the reading. So, no worries. Okay. Abel Edenilson Salazar. Present. Thank you. Abigail Elizabeth Flores. Present, teacher. Thank you, Abby. Palmore Alexander Marroquín. Valmore Alexander Marroquín. Carlos Emilio Coto. Okay. Carlos Humberto Estrada. Present teacher. Thank you. Cecia Noemí Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you. Francisco Ernesto Acuña. Present teacher. Thank you. Hazel Vanessa Menjiva. Present. Thank you, Hazel. Julissa Yamilet Villalta. Present teacher. Thank you, Julissa. Carla Daniela Molina. Present. Thank you, Carla. Carla Ivania Anaya. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Carla Lorena Mendoza. Present. Thank you. Marilyn Alejandra Grande. Present. Thank you. Mario Ernesto Ramirez. Present. Thank you. Melanie Alexandra Martinez. Present. Thank you, Melanie. Melissa Estero Reyana. Present. Thank you, Melissa. Mirna Janet Angel. Present teacher. Thank you, Mirna. Roberto Emilio González. Me dijo que escribió aquí en el chat, Roberto. Todavía va de camino, me parece que dijo. Uh -huh. Ok, tenemos a Roberto como oyente. Santos Cristina Cerrito. Santos Cristina Cerritos. Víctor Noé Bonilla. Víctor Noé Bonilla. Ok, por ahí lo escuchamos. Ok, ahí está Víctor. Thank you so much. Now, we will continue here. Ok, in the material, let's see, we have a reading. And I'm going to share the manual since it's easier for me to make it bigger and we are going to be able to read it better than the end presentation. Okay, here we have the reading on page 17 of your material. And what is this reading about? Well, in this reading, you will find the words that we were discussing in the previous exercise. Uh, so those words are included here in this reading. So that's why we did the vocabulary exercise before. Now, in this reading, let's see the instruction set. Read this internet article, five requirements of the perfect manager. Can someone read the number one? Be a people person. Be a people person. Who wants to read the number one? Nerd said is people. Who wants to read? 
para leer, teacher? Yes, please. Yo solo voy a leer, voy a decir, bueno. <laughs> yes, that's the attitude. Bueno. La primera, ¿cómo se pronuncia, teacher? Esa de, 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 aquí, esa, esa, esa. Nox, North uh -huh. Northsot es como el nombre de la compañía. So ah, es un nombre Northsot. propio de una empresa. Uh -huh. Northsot. Bueno. Eh, we a people person. Northsot is people and we are looking for managers who like people. You should be comfortable with complete resolution. You should know how people work and know how to motivate your team. If you are better with computers, and then people and understand being going better that English, you are not a good fit for our managerial Managers. Managers. Sí. Ajá, excellent. Thank you so much, Janet. You see, this is practice. Es práctica en algunas que como que al principio se, eh, pero después usted misma la dijo bien, nada más la última es managerial. Managerial. Eso sí estuvo un poquito difícil, but excellent job, Janet. You see, you can do it. It's practice. Okay, and that's the attitude. So, as you can see here, it's a very important point about this is it says, um, this, uh, yes, if you are better with computers than people and understand Klingon better than English, you're an, not a good fit for our managerial team. <laughs> Okay, so se dice que si se entiende mejor con las computadoras y entiende el Kinglon más que el inglés, entonces no está bien para ser un manager. You have to be a people person. Llevarse bien con la gente, saber cómo manejarlos, eh, resolver conflictos, etc. Eh, es a, a, acerca de being a people person. So that's the first point. Thank you so much, Janet. Now let's be at number two, be a good communicator. A volunteer to read the number two, be a good communicator. Carla Mendoza, thank you so much. Okay, be a good communicator. You should be able to communicate effectively using all method, methods, including visual presentation, public speaking, email, teleconference, teleconferencing, and face-to-face. -face. Good communication is two-way street. You will be required to routine, update yeah. your, routinely, update your employees on their and then teams, and teams performance. You will communicate any feedback from you, you per up, manage, up. Up, manage, me, management, management. Mm -hmm. management and customer and provide status information when asked. When asked. Okay, very good. Thank you so much for helping us with this. I think this is like a really clear, right? To be a good communicator. So we, need, we don't need to go deeper on that. All right, so let's continue with number three. Be technically proficient. Be technically proficient. I volunteer to read the number three. Uh, voy yo. Okay, thank you. Okay, be technically proficient. The products we create are not a nurture are technically complicated. You don't need to be able to code in C number. C number, but you should be able to give techni technical guidance and decide the best 
strategies and methods to success and know having watched happy feet or the march of the penguins does not qualify qualify you as technically proficient in Linux. All right, excellent. Thank you so much, Carlos, for reading. Uh, is there any question about this uh, point in a number three? Or uh, is this clear? Ese, perdón, este, ese C y numeral que sale ahí, eso se hace referencia a como a programación en lenguaje C. Ah, okay. Good uh -huh. to know. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there any other question, comment? Okay, so before we proceed, esta palabrita ya nos apareció dos veces y vamos a hacer refuerzo con esta palabra. So, let me see. ¿A dónde estaba? Mm -hmm. Ah, this one. When it's TH, it's like, it's like, a, a, tiene que ser como a, a lengua hiriente y dejar un poquito salir aire, como que vamos a decir zapato, bien pronunciado, ahora sí deberíamos de decirlo, zapato, pero decimos zapato, ¿verdad? pero ajá, es como el sonido que debe de tener una Z, eh, la TH, entonces es method, methods, methods. Excellent. There you go. Now, number four, encourage teamwork. I volunteer to read this part. Encourage teamwork. Encourage teamwork. Me teacher. Thank you so much, Carla. They encourage Teamwork. Teamwork is important at Noxor. Not only are, are you required to encourage the best practice for building teamwork, teamwork you are considered, considered a part of team. We have no, no doors at Noxor for you hide behind. In fact, we have no traditional office space for manage, management managers. You are required to sit and work with your staff. Excellent. Thank you so much, Carla, for reading. Is there any question about this part in number four? Okay, if there are no questions, we can continue with the number five. Lead by example. What does lead by example mean? What is it about? A volunteer to read about this. Leading by example. A volunteer? Okay, we have uh, Melissa, and thank you, Hazel. Let's get a chance to Melissa. Okay. Lean by example. The best managers live by example and order, smart shop. And manager is relocated to rest and act professionally at all times and <laughs> and to be available to and give to be available uh -huh. available to give guidance guidance guidance, guidance. guidance. and help we need it leading be example means Bye. work mm -hmm. example means working late and on weekends with your employees working with your employees and using the same one for as your employees. It's 
about doing intense intense instead of, instead of pontificating and doing the right thing okay thank you so much for reading um thank you melissa is there any question about this no questions is this point clear what, what is the meaning of guidance 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 is guia to give guidance is to dar guia dar una guia to give guidance guiar y ayudar cuando sea necesario to give guidance and help when needed any other question no more questions Okay, now in the next exercise that we have here, it's related to the reading on this page, which is number 17. In this part, we're going to um, get back to the reading and read again if necessary. And you decide if these statements about the reading are true or false. You can write here true or T, if it is true, you can write F for false or the complete word false. Now, we can do this in groups. So you would decide if these sentences are true or false. And if necessary, you can go back and read in the groups. Okay. And then we're going to discuss the answers. Now I'm going to stop sharing for a little while. But uh, let me set up this so that you can share screen as well if necessary. And now I'm going to create the breakout room so that you can discuss the answers to the exercise, the true or false exercise. Okay, there you go. Mm -hmm. Ya leyeron. Ya. Yeah. A ver. The number one is false. I guess. No sé si la dos es true. Mm, let me see. 
Dice que hay que tener todas las hay que utilizar todas las herramientas para ser un buen comunicador. Entonces, Pues sí, la dos es, es, es true. Y la tres. Yo que false. Uh -huh, false. <ríe> y yo la voy diciendo y ni la voy, ni la voy escribiendo. Espérenme. Ah, no, ni yo tampoco. <ríe> la primera de mi voz false. Uh -huh. La segunda dijimos. True. Uh. La tercera era false. Uh. Ok. Encouraging teamwork is a important. Is la cuatro creo que es true. Sí, yo también. Uh. <coughs> La quinta es false. Uh -huh. Sí, totalmente de acuerdo. Pues ya estamos. Ahí está. Ese es false. No, es del segundo. Ajá. En esa hija se actúa. Sí. La primera es false y el segundo es true. Yes. Mm. Uh. Okay. True. Perdón. Um, yes, es true. True, ¿verdad? Yes. Como la verdad absoluta. Ah, oh, sí. No. Teamwork is an important aspect of the team. True. Eso es true. Ajá. Si tú fuera, you can skip extra work and have weekend off. Tú, si ustedes fuera más, podrían. True. <risa> True. Es que creo que es bien personal. Ajá. Sí, pero coincidimos que es true. ¿Verdad? Ajá. Sí. Es por el ejemplo. ¿va? Que sí. hay Ajá. que enseñar con el ejemplo. Paul, lo voy a poner. <risa> No hay que trabajarlo. Vale, entonces serían true, true, true. Hold, la primera nada más. Sí, esa es la primera. Uh -huh. A ver, se puso algo más. Teacher, ¿qué es lo que vamos a practicar? Disculpe. Hola. Ok. Uh, the exercise was to uh, complete the true and false exercise about the reading. Mm -hmm. Sentí de mi teléfono, entonces no puedo compartir nada porque no sé. 
Oh, okay, no worries. We are going to check together. Just waiting for the rest to join the session. Y ya vamos a chequearlo. Así que si no lo pudo hacer por problemas técnicos, no se preocupe. Ahorita lo chequeamos. Hmm. Okay, we are now complete. Now, um, let's see. We already did the reading exercise and about this reading, we were to complete the true or false exercise about the reading. Remember that is related to the reading, the previous reading. Now, in number one, uh, it says, volunteer to read the sentence and give us the answer. Volunteer. Oh, okay, Janet says, it is more important to manage system than people. Janet says is false. Correct, Janet. Is false. Excellent job. Now, a volunteer for number two. To be a great communicator, one should use as many tools as possible. It's true. That is correct, Carla. Thank you so much. A volunteer for number three. Uh, sería true. In order to be technically proficient, giving one's opinion is enough. Uh, I think that yes, probably is true. Because it's said technically proficient. Your opinion is enough. It's false. Mm. It, it depends, I guess. It's most likely to be... Um, because it says technically proficient. Giving one's opinion is enough. Hmm. It's tricky. <laughs> it's tricky, uh -huh. but it's tricky porque probablemente, but ahí dice para ser técnicamente eficiente, ¿verdad? O, o, o que digan que si tiene habilidades suficientes su opinión. Puede ser, pero... Mm, Hay gente que es buena como para decir montar carreta, ¿verdad? Y es bueno, speaking, y uno dice, ah, sí, se ve que sabe. Pero a la hora de ponerlo en práctica, ¿será cierto que es proficient? Mm. So, it's tricky. Para mí que es, 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 es like... Sí, es raro. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Could be false. Ajá, podría ser falso. Porque... Yo puse false. Uh-huh, yeah, for me it's false, but yes, it's tricky. <laughs> so, puede ser que alguien diga, no, si con solo que diga lo que sabe es suficiente, entonces, técnicamente, proficient is true. Pero para mí es false. Tendría que demostrarlo. <laughs> but yes, uh, so yes, thank you. So, in that one is tricky, so si pusieron true, yeah, that can be technically proficient. If you have false, you have your point as well. <laughs> so thank you so much. Now, number four, volunteer. False. False. Or true, it is encouraging. Que dijimos que era encouraging? Que es encourage? Como animar. Animar, ajá, uh -huh. animar, ajá. Uh -huh. Animar el teamwork. Is as important, es tan importante como ser parte del equipo. Mm, yeah, true. it's true. It's true. 
Yes, it's true. Ajá, porque es parte de formar un equipo, ¿verdad? Si usted ve que es necesario darle ánimo al equipo, lo hace. Por eso es teamwork. Yeah. So, yes, it's most likely true. Um, and the last one, number five. Volunteer. Julissa, thank you. If you are... A manager, you can skip extra work and have weekend off is false. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is false. Uh, uh, because it, it is related to the last one. It's like lead by example, ¿verdad? Es como de, decimos en español, es como decir, dar el ejemplo, ¿verdad? Lead by example. Entonces, uh, aunque aquí, pues, la mayoría, ¿verdad? Decimos, ah, como es el manager, ¿verdad? No, se salta el trabajo extra, prefiere no hacer lo que lo hagan los, los demás abajo y tener sus fines de semana libre y sí exige que los demás puedan trabajar el fin de semana. Pero según el artículo, hay que dar el ejemplo. Lead by example. Y dice, si tienes que quedarte tarde con el equipo, quedarse tarde, ¿verdad? Parquearse donde parquean los demás, Ir al baño de, de los demás, ¿verdad? Eso no, no es like, um, no, no es una cosa aparte o privilegiada, ¿verdad? Sino que tiene que dar el ejemplo en todo sentido. Ok, um, so, that would be the reading part. Um, any question? ¿Tienen alguna pregunta que ha surgido por ahí? Si volvieron a leer o algo que no esté muy claro. <risa> No questions? No, 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 teacher. Thank you. Okay. All right. And the next exercise is a reading exercise. It's uh, well in page 18. And it says, write a seven-line paragraph about your work experience and personal information, such as studies, experience, and other jobs. Use time expressions. Remember the time expressions that we studied a um, couple of days ago? For, from, to, mm -hmm. ¿Cuáles otras recuerdan que vimos? Vimos from, Science. to, since, uh -huh. from, to, since, for, for, for. Until, aha, uh -huh. then, aha, yes. uh -huh. those were the time expression that we studied. So, nos dice que escribamos el párrafo de siete líneas, incluir time expressions. Y ahí les puse uh, esa work experience acerca de su experiencia laboral. Y ahí hay un ejemplo para que se guíen. Eh, esto, todo esto que está acá, es lo que les mandé en el PowerPoint antes de la clase. Para que pues eh, lo tengan ahí handy. It says, I studied at Universidad del Salvador from 2000 to 2004. I obtained my teacher's degree in 2005. Since then, I have worked in different English academies and also in the call center industry for three years. My first job as a teacher was at ITCA. Then I moved to a call center and worked there until it stopped operations in El Salvador, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You may continue there. This is, ese es solo como un ejemplo para que vayan viendo. Uh, si fijan, aquí están algunas time expressions from to, oh, me pasé, from to, Since then, ahí están las dos, como decir, desde entonces. Eh, si las usamos juntas, es como decir, desde entonces. Since then, um, let's see, and for, again, for. Uh, here we have then. Here we have until. So try to write a short paragraph about your work experience and try to include the time expressions. Les voy a dar tiempito para que eso lo pueden hacer en su cuaderno, um, en su, alguna paginita que tengan por ahí para anotar. No es necesario que hagamos 
algo que nos tome mucho tiempo, like a PowerPoint presentation or a, a Word document. So I'm going to give you, uh, let's see, five minutes. Five minutes for you to write your paragraph and then we're going to share what you have with the class.
Sí, me escuché. Okay, time is over. I volunteer to share. Share what you have. Si solo hicieron dos líneas, that's fine. If you want to share with us. A volunteer, you can raise your hand. Teacher, solo era de copiarlo todo, ¿verdad? Oh, uh, mm, not a copy, oh. it's to write about you. Este um. era como un ejemplo, pero era así hacer algo similar acerca de ustedes. Ah, ok. Uh -huh. Sí que acabo de prácticamente ponerme aquí en línea porque venía en tráfico pero sí ya yes I read your message sí me okay. un mensajito así que sí ya la puse por ahí con la asistencia so yes no worries ahorita nos ponemos al día thank you teacher ya, you're ahorita. welcome a uh, volunteer to share hi teacher Yes, hi. Do you want to uh, share with us? Yes. Um, um, I study of, at the Josephine School from 2005 to 2006. I obtained my bachelor degree in 2007. Same thing, I have worked in different areas. I work in the Ministry of Defense for 80 and eight years. I currently work in the Municipal Mayor Office of Sonsonate in the security area as a municipal agent uh, can by the position of technician in closed circuit systems. Okay, excellent, very nice and very complete paragraph. Thank you so much for sharing about your uh, work experience with us. You did an excellent job, Francisco. Thank you so much. Okay. Solo, teacher, solo tengo una 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 consulta um, cuando cuando digo título dice bachelors no sé si está correcto la pronunciación yes that is correct uh -huh. bachelors and then the degree a título o el el el, el, el título sería degree ah, okay yes Es el okay, bachelor's, es como una licenciatura. So, bachelor's degree, o título de un licenciatura en tal cosa. No, ok. But yes, Thank the pronunciation is correct. It's bachelor's, así como se, se escribe. Excellent. Any other volunteer? Victor yes. Maria, thank you. Ok. Um, I studied at University of El Salvador from 2006 to 2010. I, I obtained degree in public accounting in 2012. I have worked in two different non-governmental organizations. I start working in World Vision for three years until 2016. Then I was contracted for FIAS until now. My position in the company is as financial technician. Financial. financial financial technician okay so is that all thank you so much victor it's a very interesting 
thank you so much for your uh for sharing your um your experience with us you did an excellent job and uh, yes um i heard somebody else wanted to participate pero no pude ver quién era okay we have was... carla carla daniela okay thank you carla yeah i uh, graduated from colegio santa teresa de jesus in 2017 then i studied english for six months in centro cultural in 19 uh, in 2018 i worked as a waitress in a calaca restaurant in the same year for a while then i quit since then i have worked as a salesperson in almacen pacifico and i still study english now excellent That's all. perfect thank you so much you worked in my favorite restaurant <laughs> Yeah, I really love it. Yeah. But working there is it's it's the same as hell. <laughs> uh, I, I can imagine that. Not only uh because of uh um it's it's heavy, right? Standing, yeah. um being walking in a hurry, a uh, pressure, um some angry customers, difficult customers as well. So yes. It's a bunch of uh, stressful situations working like uh, in a yeah. That's why I quit. Like yes, quit. yes. Uh, I think especially on weekends, probably right. Yeah. Yeah. But, on yeah. holidays, on holidays was terrible. Yes, but the food is ah oh, delicious. <laughs> delicious. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing, Carla. Any yeah. other volunteer? Yeah, teacher. Thank you, Carla Mendoza. Okay, I study at Univers Universidad del Salvador from 2014 to 2019. I, I graduated with a degree in education in 2020, but I have been working as a teacher since 2016. I have been a kindergarten teacher for two years, and my only job has been at the Equi School. I currently work there. Excellent. Do you like working with children? Yes, I love. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like about working with children? Excuse me? What do you like about working with children? And they are lovely. <laughs> yeah, they are lovely. They are nice. And they are always willing to do what they are being asked for. If you say jump, Everybody jump. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> and they learn really fast. So, yes, that's nice. But it, yeah. it demands a bunch of patience. <laughs> <laughs> and, and currently I work with first, to a second, and third guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you work with primary students. Yes. Okay. Oh, I, I have a <laughs> kindergarten brother. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, thank you so much for sharing, Carla. Uh, any other volunteer? Alguien más que quiera compartir? Okay, Valmore. Thank you so much. Um. Uh, I I student the industrial ma maintenance in machine career of the Ciudadela Don Bosco Vocational Training Center is training to work uh, as maintenance ma 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 mechanic in Torogos in Torogos for cinco years cinco five years for five years uh, okay. Uh, continuing my, uh, my 
this uh, university study the te technology the uh, university technological uh, in Salvador uh -huh. uh, the industrial engineer career then he started working at Intradesa as the engineer junior for five years. I currently work at Jongwan as line engineer. Excellent. Excellent. That's good to know that my son is studying also uh, industrial engineering. He's about to get graduate. So awesome. Uh, Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing, Valmore. Uh, any other volunteer? Awesome. So thank you so much for participating. You have been doing a very good job. I think it is easier when uh, when we write our ideas and then we share and speak. Okay, Marilyn, thank you so much, Marilyn. No sé si me voy a oír porque hay una gran bulla, pero yo creo que se escucha. Dice que no se escucha background noise. No, as, no. At least uh, okay. I don't. Okay, but yes, it's okay. 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 I study um, at Academia Panamericana del Arte Culinaria PAC from in 2014 at uh, 2016, I obtained a diploma in professional cooking, and then I studied for uh, one year at English for Call Center, and I have experience in supermarket retail, hotel, and management, and as, as a cook. Awesome, fantastic! I didn't know what. A pack standing for. <laughs> so good to yeah. know. Yes. So I think that a few people maybe knows what a pack mean for. Is academia what? Academia Panamericana del Arte Culinario. All right. Excellent. It sounds fancy. Not <laughs> <Suena> bien elegante. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nice. Thank you so much for sharing. So, um, and this is a good practice. Eh, si se, a veces cuando de repente quiere uno hablar, es como que se traba, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, recomendación y una buena manera de practicar es lo que acaban de hacer ahorita, escribir acerca de ustedes. Y esa pregunta es bien común en las entrevistas de trabajo. Le piden que hable de su experiencia laboral. Y lo han hecho muy bien. Entonces, es de escribir estos parrafitos, practicarlo bastante. Eh, he notado un cambio muy bueno eh, en cuanto a, a su desempeño con la pronunciación. Ya, ya están menos tímidos, which is good, excellent. And more participative, and that's awesome. So, thank you so much for that. Um, so, I think this is the last exercise and in here in the first section. Creo que este es el último ejercicio en la sección 1 y luego pues nos moveríamos a la sección 2. After checking, yes, we're going to check the exercise that we have, the last exercise in section number 1. And vamos a chequear de qué se trata, a ver si todo está bien. I think that you, most of you have completed that one. Y si no, acuérdense que el deadline today. Hoy es la fecha límite para que tengan completa la plataforma, al menos la sección 1, como avance mínimo. Ok, remember, tienen que ir adelante. Y si de repente se encuentran con eh, algún ejercicio que no está bien o no lo comprenden, pueden pedir ayuda. Ahí estamos en el chat de WhatsApp. Eh, cualquiera de sus compañeros o yo les podemos asistir. Solo acuérdense de tomar una captura donde se vea qué número de ejercicio es en el que están teniendo dificultades. Okay. Yo tengo una pregunta. Yes, Marilyn. Este, fíjese de que yo, este, como ya tenía el enlace desde el, desde el módulo pasado, entonces solamente es como me ingreso al enlace y empiezo a hacer los ejercicios. Solo que esta vez he tenido inconveniente 
solo me deja como estar solo hasta el módulo 5, pero busco el módulo 6 y no lo encuentro, entonces no sé si es, no sé si yo no, no estoy ingresando acá en el enlace donde es de la plataforma, pero no es, no, no he encontrado el módulo 6 para empezar los ejercicios. Eh, siempre son enlaces nuevos, cada módulo les envían un enlace nuevo para habilitarle su usuario al módulo que le corresponda, entonces, eh, Teacher, ¿sí? yo en mi caso hago lo mismo y solo me posiciono y le doy clic donde sale nuestro nombre y ahí le salen los cursos que uno tiene habilitados y le aparece el módulo 6 y usted ya ingresa ahí. Ok, gracias Yulisa por la información. Entonces intente así, Marilyn, y si no le funciona. Ah, ok. Ok, perfecto. Acuérdense que deadline es ahora a medianoche, pero todavía mañana en la mañana, pues eh, tienen chance. Si no, les van a estar contactando para hacer un poco de presión. Así es que para evitar mejor, pues. Eh, traten de hacerlo, ya ven que es fácil, se hacen rapidito y cualquier eh, problemita eh, con algún ejercicio estamos a la orden, pendientes. Uh, so let's Thank see, you're welcome. And the last homework, the number five, it's a, it's a review. In the number five, it's a review of all the contents that you have studied since the very beginning. Um, so, esto es como un review. So, aquí está todo lo que han visto hasta el día de ahora. So, if it says, I speak two languages, Russian and English. So, what is the uh, correct option here? Can or can't? Can. 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 Okay. Now, in number two, it says, my sister type fast. She's very slow. Can't. Uh-huh. That, uh, the, yes. Uh, I have been your friend 2016. Since. Since, ajá, esta es la que nos marca el inicio de un periodo de tiempo es indefinido. So like a start desde, tan, desde tal fecha, desde tal uh, periodo de tiempo. So yes, since. Now I lived in San Salvador 2005 in or since. In. Mm -hmm. Probably yes, because it is in past. It's como que yes, over, right? So, yes, we're going to check. Now, I am working credit bank. At. At. Okay, and then we send, and all the answers are correct. So, excellent. That was a piece of cake. And I see that you're ready to get 100% in section number one. And remember, if you can go ahead, do it. Eh, en el momento, si de repente en la siguiente mo, um, sección tienen alguna dificultad, de pronto solo, ah, la respuesta es tal. Y después lo podemos discutir en la clase. Cualquier duda o pregunta, porque a veces eso sucede, ¿verdad? Que si piden ayuda en el chat es como que, ah, la respuesta es esa. Pero no entendí por qué, en qué, ajá, y no es la idea. La idea es clarificar las dudas eh, en la sección, ¿verdad? Así es que así aprovechamos el que es el objetivo también de estas eh, videoconferencias, aclarar dudas, ampliar conocimiento con lo que está en la plataforma. Ok, so we're going to continue and we're going to introduce because we have already finished the first unit. So we are going to introduce the unit number two. Vamos a aprovechar el tiempo porque tal vez la dos nos tome un poquito más 
por el repaso, que estoy segura que vamos a necesitar un poco más de tiempo en esto. Así es que nos vamos a adelantar ahorita que pues ya finalizamos la sección 1 y vamos a empezar la 2. Que esta empezaríamos mañana, pero pues ah, vamos a hacer desde ya aprovechando que tenemos un poquito de tiempo. Ok, what are the contents for staff and schedules? What are we going to be doing in, in this section or unit number two? Ask and tell about schedule activities of a regular day in the workplace. Ask and tell information related to marketing strategies. Talk about scheduled activities at my workplace. Read collective schedules showing basic common tasks in a restaurant. Describe a colleague's routine at the workplace. The vocabulary that we're going to find in this unit is like everyday tasks. For example, order the inventory, interview potential employees, check the weekly schedule. Is this clear or is there any question about vocabulary, pronunciation? This is what we're going to be discussing in the section number two. No questions? No, teacher. Okay. Thank you so much. So as we will be discussing, you see here about activities at the workplace. We have this exercise. It says match the column, the information in columns A, B, C, and read the sentences. Let's check first the vocabulary. And we're going to practice uh, pronunciation. You can repeat at home. Um, we're going to do it once. And if you have questions uh, about pronunciation or vocabulary, we can make a, a pause and check it. Let's start with column A. In column A, we have, uh, we have occupations. Let's repeat. A salesperson. A chef. A mechanic, a carpenter, a reporter, a nurse. Reporters. Uh -huh. Reporter. It's como e, e, re, reporter. 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 Mm -hmm. reporter. Yes. In column B, we have the activities that some of these uh, activities are performed by the professionals in column eight. So let's check. Builds houses. Build. La U no se pronuncia, so we said build houses. Cares for patients. Writes stories. Cooks food. Fixes cars, sells clothes. In column C, we have a places in a restaurant for a construction company in a hospital. in a garage, in a department store, department store, for a newspaper, <laughs> newspaper. Okay, is there any question about vocabulary or pronunciation? No, no. no. Okay, thank you. So we're going to match. The first one is already done for you. It says a salesperson sells clothes That's in true. a department store. A salesperson sells clothes in a department store. I'll give you one minute for you to take a look and see. Lo pueden hacer nada más viendo. Eh, 
por si no descargaron el material. So we can check and then we're going to read the sentences. Okay, I volunteer to read about a chef. A chef uh -huh. cooks food in a restaurant. Excellent. A chef cooks food in a restaurant. Excellent. A mechanic. Volunteer? A mechanic? Uh, sorry, a mechanic. Fixes cars. Fixes cars. Fixes cars. In, in a, a garage. garage. In a garage. Mm -hmm. So good to know that garage no es solo el lugar donde se guarda un carro, ¿verdad? En una casa, sino que garage es el taller de reparación en sí. So good. Thank you so much. A carpenter. A carpenter builds houses. For a construction company. Excellent. That's correct. Thank you so much, Yulisa. Now, a reporter. A reporter writes stories in, in a newspaper. For a newspaper. Okay. Thank you so much. Well done. And the last one, a nurse. Cares for patients. Cares for patients? In a hospital. In a hospital. Okay, good. Do we have new vocabulary or any doubts? Preguntas? No? No questions. Okay. So... And then we have a conversation here, uh, starting with unit two. As you can see in this conversation between Will and Orson, uh, they are um, talking about what activities that some person do, like for example, cleans the kitchen, doesn't take orders, takes orders, etc. So let's check this conversation. Let's repeat at home. You can do it with the microphone off. And then uh, we're going to see if there is any question about vocabulary or pronunciation. Okay, let's begin. This kitchen looks great. It does. Who is in charge of cleaning it? Jessica is. She cleans the kitchen from Mondays to Wednesdays. She does a really good job. Indeed, but doesn't Jessica take orders during the morning shift? No, she doesn't. George does. He takes orders from 10 a.m. from 2 p.m. I get it. And who does after him? Does his brother take the orders after him? Yes, he does. Uh, 
All right. Is there any question? Teacher. Mm -hmm. Yes, Cecilia? What is the meaning in that? Indeed. Ah, indeed. Okay, indeed is to emphasize that a statement or a response is already, um, it is like confirmed and emphasize that um, the idea that is already suggested is like um, true. Es como para enfatizar que algo que se ha dicho previamente es así. Entonces, eh, es como decir, de hecho, sí. Uh -huh. Ok, gracias. You're welcome. And the other question. Es como decir, en efecto. Uh -huh. Por ejemplo, si decimos um, algo como que es verdad, como decir, estamos mejorando y participando más. Y digo, en efecto. That is indeed. Es para enfatizar que la idea previa es, es real. Es como para decir, sí, de acuerdo. Así es, en efecto. That is the meaning of indeed. Eh, una pregunta. Eh, estoy viendo ahí donde dice Jessica is. ¿Podría ser así? ¿O is Jessica? Eh, mm. ¿O qué, qué momento se usaría, digamos? Mm. Eh, como si vemos la pregunta que está antes, es who is in charge of cleaning it? ¿Quién está a cargo de limpiarla? Refiriéndose a la cocina. ¿Quién está? Entonces, en la pregunta es con cero estar, respondemos con cero estar. Jessica es. Y podría ah, okay. ser más, más eh, completa la respuesta. Jessica is in charge of, of it. Jessica está a cargo de eso. Jessica is in charge of it. Sería una respuesta más completa. Por ahí lo dejaron como corto. Jessica is. Ah, okay. Jessica está. Ok, esa era mi duda entonces. Yeah, excellent. Vamos a hacer un review también. Uh, I know that topic is like kind of a, uh, let's say maybe difficult because it's related to the simple present. Ya pasaron por ahí con el simple present. Creo que se van módulo 1, 2 y 3. Simple present, simple present. And yes, we're going to review that again. <laughs> Any other question or comment? No more questions? Okay, so it is time for you to practice and role play this conversation. Remember that we're going to be practicing it in groups, change roles, change classmates, and practice as much as you can. And try to give the proper intonation. So, para que no sonemos eh, like... Um, Plain, no es como leer así como plain, como simple, como, o uh, sea, so tenemos que dar una entonación de acuerdo para que suene como natural, que no se suene como que solo estamos leyendo por leer. Por ejemplo, la primera, si se fijan, tiene un signo de exclamación. Es como dar esa, oh, this kitchen looks great. So, yo llego, veo mi cocina súper limpia, me emociono, luce fantástica. This kitchen looks great. Uh-huh. And then the other person said, it does. Who is in charge of cleaning it? Es una pregunta. Hay que entonar pregunta. Dar como las pausas también. Si hay un punto, hacer una pequeña pausa, pray, etc. Y acuérdense, repetición, repetición y repetición nos va ayudando. Tal vez la primera vez lo hagan un poco lento. Luego de poquito van haciéndolo más fluido. Y así de esa manera suena más natural y alcanzamos el objetivo. So uh, let me create a breakout room so that you can practice. Uh, I'm going to, I think I will recreate them. Lo voy a volver a crear. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, ready. Hello. Entonces no. I'm Will. Okay. I first. Mm -hmm. This kitchen it's, looks great. It does. Who is sure of, of cleaning it? Cleaning it. Clean it. Jessica is. She cleans the kitchen from Monday to Wednesday. She does a really good job. Indeed. But doesn't Jessica take order during, during the morning shift? No, she doesn't. Jorge does. He takes orders from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. I get it. And who does after, after him? Does his brother take the order after him? Yes, he does. Okay. Switch. Um, this kitchen looks looks great. It does. Who is, who is in charge of cleaning it? Jessica is. She cleans the kitchen from Monday to Wednesday. She does a really good job. Indeed, but doesn't but doesn't Jessica take orders during the morning shift? No, she doesn't. George does. He takes order from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. I get it. And who does after him? Does his brother take the orders after him? Yes, he does. Okay. Okay. I mean... I'm first. Are you done with the practice? Yo soy desde mi teléfono, la verdad. Y creo que el otro muchacho solo está escuchando. Sí, cuando ya pase a la sala principal, ahí no sé con quién pueda practicar ya con alguien más. Ahí. Carlos. Ok, mm -hmm. the, I, I think that Carlos y Asis, es, eh, creo que ellos dos solo están como oyentes ahorita. La voy a cambiar de room. Ok. Porque sí, creo que. Cas. Marilyn. Marilyn. Ahorita la voy a mover y le da clic. Okay. Ah, pero que creo que aquí está. Okay. No, she doesn't. Jorge does. He takes order from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. I get it. And uh, who does 
after him? Does his brother takes or takes the order after him? Yes, he does. Okay, thank you. You can Cristina. Hello. Hola. Hola. Ya practicó usted. No, no, no. Este, con usted o con, o con ella. ¿Con, ¿Cómo se llama? Si gusta ¿Con una con Mario y la siguiente cambiamos y lo hago yo. No hay problema, Cristina. No, para no, que... O con él así, eh, viceversa. ¿ve? Vaya, Vaya, sí. Sí, muchas gracias. Eh, this is real. It does. Who is in charge of cleaning it? Jessica is she clean the kitchen the kitchen from Monday to Wednesday. She she does a really good a really good job. In the book. Doesn't Jessica take order during the morning shift? No, she doesn't. Her head does. He takes order from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Okay. I'll get it and um, that after skin. Does, pardon. Uh, it get in it and um, what does that after skin? Does his brother say the other after skin? Yes, he does. Ok. Vaya, si gusta decir, ya nos llamaron. Cansamos a hacerlo, creo yo. Sí, todos los segundos que pasan. This kitchen looks, this chicken looks great. Great. It does do it in church. Church o church? Church. Church. O cleaning it. Jessica is. She cleans the kitchen from Mondays on Wednesdays. She does a really good job. Indeed. But doesn't Jessica take order during the morning shift? No, she doesn't call her that she pay or she pay. Okay, uh, I'm missing two participants, I guess. So let me check if they are still in breakout room. Apparently, improvise back. Okay, um, we're going to check attendance before we continue uh, practicing the conversation and doing the role play in the main section. So let's say present as soon as you hear your name. Give me one second. Okay, here we go. Adele Eden Nielsen. Abigail Elizabeth. Present. Thank you. Valmore Alexander. Valmore Alexander. Carlos Emilio Cotto. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Humberto Estrada. Present teacher. Thank you. Fresia Noemi Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you. Francisco Ernesto Acuña. Present teacher. Hazel Vanessa Mengíbar. Present. Thank you. Julissa Yamilet Vialta. Present, teacher. Thank you. Carla Daniela Molina. Carla Ivania Anaya. Present, teacher. Thank you. Carla Lorena Mendoza. I'm here. Thank you. Marilyn Alejandra. 
Present. Thank you. Mario Ernesto Ramirez. Present. Thank you, Mario. Melanie Alessandra Martinez. Present. Okay, thank you. Melissa Estero Rayana. Present teacher. Thank you. Mina Yanet Angel. Present teacher. Thank you. Roberto Emilio Gonzalez. Present teacher. Thank you. <clears throat> Ms. Cristina Cerritos. Present teacher. Thank you. And Victor Noe Bonilla. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, let's go back to the conversation we were practicing. And yes, you did a pretty good job with this one. Just remember here the pronunciation of a Disney word que decíamos en efecto. Así es. Indeed. Indeed. Okay. Do we have two volunteers to role play for the group? You can raise your hand. Volunteers to role play the conversation. Yes, I can. Okay, we have Christina. And who wants to have Christina? Con Don Mario Neto. Okay. Okay, Christina, you can Later start. Yes. Yeah. This, this kitchen looks great. It does. Who is in charge of cleaning it? Jessica is. She cleaned the kitchen from Monday to Wednesday. She does a really good job. A really good job. She did. That's a Jessica Day order during the morning shift. No, she doesn't. Or he does. It takes order from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. I guess it I guess it and would that after it that his brother take the order after it. Yes, he does. And there okay. you thank you so much. Very good job. Thank you for your participation. Thanks a bunch. Okay, now listen. Um the there are a couple of words. Hay unas palabritas por ahí que son kind of tricky. Like, for example, the first one, remember, great. And make sure to pronounce the T at the end para que no suene como que es el color. So, pronounce the great. 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 This kitchen looks great. And the other, this is kind of tricky because se parece como al español. Cuando, y entonces y la mente nos dice durante. <ríe> o sea, si estamos leyendo y de repente vemos esa palabra, la mente nos dice, ay, dije durante. Entonces decimos during. Pero, ajá, esa es you. During. During. Ajá, remember here. During. You. During. Excellent. Do we have two more volunteers? Me, teacher. Julissa and who's going to help Julissa? Mm -hmm. Con Francisco estaba. Okay, Francisco, can you help Julissa? Okay. This kitchen looks great. It does. We charging go so cleaning. It's Jessica is she cleans the kitchen from Mondays to Wednesday. She does a really good job. Indeed, but Gus and Jessica they orders during the morning shift. No, she does your does does he take order from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. I get it. And who does after him? 
Does his brother take the order after him? Yes, he does. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you so much for participating. Tenemos alguien más que quiera participar. No. Janet Angel. Okay, who wants to help Janet with the role play? Mm, con Balmore. Okay, Balmore. Can you help us? Balmore. Era que se fue a dormir, Balmore. O la otra chica, porque no me acuerdo cómo que se llama. Uh, volunteer to yo? help. <ríe> vale. Va, empiezo, empiezo, empiezo yo. Empiezo. Sí, como gusta. This kitchen looks great. It does. Who is in charge of cleaning it? Jessica is, she cleans the kitchen from Monday to Wednesday. She does a really good job. Indeed, but doesn't Jessica take orders during the morning tip? No, she doesn't, just does his takes orders from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. I got it, he, and who does after him? Yes, he does. All right, excellent. Very well done. Thank you so much for participating. Now, let's see. Is there any question about this? Hay algo que uh, les llame la atención o recuerden que es importante que no se queden con dudas, uh, que ser curiosos y de repente, eh, I know this is simple present, I know that you have studied it before, ya lo estudiaron, pero no importa, eso en cada momento que se considere oportuno podemos hacer un refuerzo y nunca piensen que hay una pregunta que sea a veces uno dice, ay no, pero es que esa pregunta quizás es um, como muy um, básica por no, o, o nos da pena porque dicen que van a decir, uh, etc. So, no, no se queden con las dudas porque las van a ir arrastrando módulo tras módulo y no es esa la idea. La idea de las videoconferencias es eh, despejar dudas, practicar y ampliar lo que está en la plataforma. So, if you have any questions, go ahead and, uh, yes? Eh, esta palabra Wednesday, Wednesday, es, ¿así se pronuncia o está mal pronunciada? Oh, like the second time. En la segunda vez la dijo, como debe ser, Wednesday. 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 Uh -huh. Wednesday. Uh -huh. okay. Wednesdays. Y like it's in plural, es Wednesdays. Los miércoles, okay. Wednesdays. Uh -huh. Excellent. Thank you, gracias. You're welcome. Any other question? And also practice helps. La práctica les ayuda también. Eh, porque a veces como que no se practica algo y como que ya se empieza a olvidar, pero de repente he notado que ustedes mismos lo corrigen, como que ah, no, no es así, y ustedes lo corrigen automáticamente porque todavía estaba por ahí eh, algún recuerdo, ¿verdad? De cómo se pronuncia, de cómo se dice. But yes, this is with practice, it comes with practice. So good that you're practicing and also it helps us. También, como les decía, nos ayuda a ver eh, qué podemos eh, reforzar, qué podemos mejorar. So uh, next thing is the questions um, regarding to the conversations that we already practiced. 
Mm, the first one, number one, it says, who cleans the kitchen from Mondays to Wednesdays? Do you remember? Who cleans Jessica. The... Uh-huh, so you can write here, Jessica cleans the kitchen from Mondays to Wednesday, like a whole or complete answer. You can write the whole thing. Or a short answer would be, ¿cómo sería para respuesta corta? Who cleans the kitchen? Jessica from... is. She is mm. Jessica. Is? She is Jessica. Um, Oye, oh, oh, Jessica is. Is? Como, ¿quién es la responsable de la limpieza? She is uh, Jessica. No, no está cero no. estar aquí. ¿Quién limpia? <laughs> ok. Jessica no Jessica is clean the kitchen. Jessica is clean the kitchen. Hmm. Mm. Again, in the question, there is no verb B. No hay verbo cero estar en la pregunta. Dice quién limpia la cocina. Me está preguntando quién. Que limpia, ajá. Entonces sería así como lo dijo el primer, la primera persona que contestó, Jessica, simplemente Jessica. Mm, y yes, eso puede quedar como Jessica, pero Oye. Eh, ahí está. Eh, she does. Eh, she does. O oh, Jessica does. Uh -huh. No voy a usar is, voy a usar el auxiliar de tercera persona. Presente simple, entonces es Jessica does. Pero dicen, y si el ver is es presente simple, es tercera persona, ¿por qué no is? Mm. That's part of the simple present. Eso es parte del presente simple. Y yes, it's kind of hard. Because it's a lot of rules, es muchas reglas, pero... Um, veo que todavía, y, y ese es el punto, todavía hay confusión de decir, ¿cuándo voy a usar is? ¿Cuándo voy a usar does? Uh -huh. So, that's the main point, y por eso les decía que por eso nos va a tomar un poquito más, y ya introducimos la unidad con el simple present. Vamos a hacer un review para que ya quede más claro para ustedes cuándo vamos a usar is, cuándo vamos a usar does, etc. ¿Cuándo vamos a incluir el verbo be? ¿Cuándo vamos a incluir auxiliar en el simple present? Porque ustedes dicen, is, es presente. Yes, does, is present también. Pero ¿cuándo voy a usar este? ¿Cuándo voy a usar aquel? Eh, mañana vamos a hacer el repaso. So, um, ahorita pues nada más agradecerles por su uh, asistencia. Traten de estar siempre puntuales el día de mañana. Eh, para el día de ahora el 101 le corresponde a Carlos Humberto, así que pues si se puede quedar un par de minutitos ahorita después de la clase, that would be fantastic. So, um, that would be it for today, and uh, si no hay más preguntas, porque ahorita para explicar esto que acabamos de uh, entrar como en conflicto, es como, like, no time, <laughs> we need... Lots of time for this and practice. Vamos a estar re haciendo review and practice. So don't miss uh, tomorrow's class. Good night. Good night. Good night. Yes. Sleep well. I know you're tired, but we're almost done. Casi terminamos la semana. So <laughs> keep it up. See you Thank tomorrow. You. Thank, Thank you, teacher. Good night, teacher. Good night. Thank sleep you, teacher. Well. See you tomorrow. You're welcome. See you tomorrow. Okay, Carlos, thank you for staying. Um, how are you feeling? Do you prefer it in English or Spanish? Oh, well, ahora en español. No yeah. quiero procesar nada en inglés. Okay. Y es que me ha tocado, me ha tocado, me ha empezado en estos días, pero bueno, siempre ahí de escucha y después ver los videos y hacer los ejercicios. Ok, fantastic. Está bien. No worries. So, are you familiar with the one-on-ones? Ya está como familiarizado con los uno a uno, ¿verdad? 
sí, ya anteriormente con otros profesores habíamos hecho lo mismo. Ah, ok, ¿cómo se ha sentido en las clases? ¿Cómo va? Pues eh, igual me va costando un poco, pero voy aprendiendo y a veces tomo mis tiempos libres para medio practicarlo en, cosas, en, mis, en mi trabajo o cuando voy a hacer rutas. A veces me pongo ahí por ratitos a, a pensar y hablar en inglés un poquito porque por lo menos se me quede algo pegado. Sí, es importante y lo felicito de verdad que eh, aprovecho esos Eh, que les podemos llamar tiempos a veces que, que, que los dejamos ahí, tiempos muertos, a veces incluso en el tráfico, en vez de ir viendo si vamos en el bus, es como es que le van echando el escándalo a todo el que se va subiendo para pasar el tiempo del aburrimiento. Entonces, Sí, así mejor toca. ir pensando, ¿verdad?, eh, en inglés, practicando, haciendo como un review de lo que se ha estudiado, si hay vocabulario nuevo, también echarle... Eh, un vistazo y practicarlo ya sea pegando un papelito donde tengamos, si trabaja en una oficina enfrente de la computadora o si no, pues en la cama antes de dormir usted ve el podcast ahí con las palabritas y las repaso un par de veces y ya, yeah, yeah, so yes it's good. Es, es bueno que esté uh, haciendo sus chancecitos para practicar, el inglés es práctica, y si no lo practica uno se olvida so, o, o, o se oxida Porque a veces es como que sé qué significa esa palabra, pero no sé cómo se pronuncia, ya se me olvidó. Entonces se va como oxidando cuando uno no lo practica. Así que pues lo felicito. Eh, siga así. Y pues quisiera también saber si hay algún tema que se le dificulte o algo con respecto a la clase que le parezca bien o que sienta que le está funcionando para pues seguirlo fomentando. Pues, pues lo que me cuesta un poquito más es la pronunciación más que todo y, y cómo se llama y que la, la fluencia eso es lo que me cuesta un poquito Pero es, el, volvemos al punto, es práctica y si usted tal vez estuvo en las primeras clases, tuvimos el, el como el con el ed, ¿verdad? La pronunciación, entonces hicimos un repasito así rapidito y ya lo están haciendo bien. Han tomado eh, eh, las recomendaciones, han tomado el repaso y lo están aplicando, así es que es práctica. Y lo que ayuda mucho es que ustedes participen. Así que si dicen, me cuesta la pronunciación, que eso no sea una, eh, un stop para usted, sino todo lo contrario. Si usted siente que le cuesta, entonces tome todo el chance para practicar. Eh, especialmente yo trato de meterme en los rooms para oír cómo lo están haciendo y ahí les corrijo algunas palabritas que escuche. Pero a veces no logro llegar a todos los rooms porque es demasiado tiempo. Entonces, es que se van a memorizar la, la, eh, una conversación y ahí se nos fue la clase. Entonces, eh, tomar el chance en la sección principal, ¿verdad? Acuérdense, ahí está eh, eh, el chat. Si no, puedo, si no encuentran el botoncito para levantar la mano. Pero lo importante es que participen para poder ver en qué se les puede eh, apoyar. Así es que, pues, nada más eso sería de participar Siempre que le sea posible, no quedarse con las dudas y aplicar las pues, correcciones. ¿verdad? ¿Y qué hace aparte para practicar el inglés? ¿De qué se apoya? Pues, voy a agarrar algo como, como religión, estar viendo algún video en YouTube, le pongo los subtítulos en inglés, o sea, en, lo, en la forma que voy escuchando, voy leyendo como a la palabra escrita, y alguna palabra que me cueste, eh, la voy este, repitiendo hasta que se me quede, ¿cómo se llama? Que se me quede la palabra. Ah, ok, muy bien. Ok, eh, lo que también puede hacer, eh, que les recomiendo si es por cuestión de boca, para enriquecer vocabulario, para practicar pronunciación, son esas dos aplicaciones que le escribí ahí. Esas pues uno las descarga eh, en la App Store o en la Play Store. Six Minute English and BBC Learning English. Yes. Entonces, eh, esas tienen como los podcasts, a veces son de noticias, a veces son temas de salud, 
um, avances científicos o cosas de adolescentes, temas así como de la vida cotidiana. Y ahí uno dice, si usted siente que la, la lección es como que muy, entonces se va y busca algo otro tema donde sienta que el vocabulario es más amigable. Lo interesante es de que tienen los podcasts, entonces usted puede escuchar y también tiene el script. Le, le, le sale ahí el escrito de lo que están diciendo. Entonces usted puede tratar de ir repitiendo como escucha y pues buscar el vocabulario nuevo para ir ampliando. Entre más vocabulario tenga, se le va a hacer eh, más fácil eh, a, a hablar más fluido, porque como dice, quiere eh, ganar más fluidez, es práctica y vocabulario. Práctica. Uh -huh. Y con la pronunciación le puede ayudar este buscar en la, en la misma, ¿verdad? Puede ser, no sé, App Store o Play Store, eh, descarga, busca Dictionary y si le aparece el de uh -huh. Cambridge, ese es muy bueno. Y ahí siempre aparece el icono de la bocinita para que usted pues si necesita eh, saber cómo se pronuncia alguna palabra y lo puede buscar y luego uh -huh. le da, eh, porque a veces el, 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 el audio del traductor de Google es como un poquito... Es raro, o sea, es el aprendizaje. Aunque todavía está en aprendizaje. Ajá, entonces eh, yo, yo recomiendo mejor que descarguen un diccionario y, y ese es muy completo. Ahí les sale qué función tiene la palabra y la bocinita para que eh, eh, hagan eh, su práctica de listening y repetir, practicar la pronunciación de la palabra Ajá. que estén buscando. Esas serían como recomendaciones. Y algo más que le pueda ayudar, Carlos, algún tema que usted sienta tal vez dificultad. Eh, quiero ver cuál, bueno, desde hace bastante como para formular las oraciones con el, el verbo to be, eso me, me costaba un poco, pero como con el pasar de los módulos, como que ya va uno poniéndose en sintonía, ya va uno entonando. Yes, ajá, entonces espero yo que con el repaso de mañana terminemos de pulir, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Así que pues um, no se lo pierda, mañana repaso tenemos con el presente simple y ahí vamos a ver con el verbo to be, el do y el das y hay unos ejercicios, hay algo challenging que les he puesto como para que eh, discutan y eh, desempolven el conocimiento que tienen del simple present. <risa> sí, así va a tocar. Sí. Vamos a ver. Eh, ¿Algo más que quisiera agregar? Tal vez sobre la clase, cómo se ha sentido, algo que sienta que le funcione, algo que le parezca bien, como para seguirlo haciendo. Bueno, así como usted dice, de, de ¿cómo se llama? De, de leer, este, ya cosas de noticias y descubrir palabras o pronunciaciones. Yo lo que hago. Busco varios videos eh, donde usan más que todo como los modismos que usan actualmente en Estados Unidos. Son unas palabras algo raritas que usan como para una mayor fluidez. Sí, y para comprensión también, porque como uh -huh. dice, a veces esos modismos lo dejan perdido a uno, es como que no sí. tiene sentido que me estás diciendo, ¿verdad? Pero ya yes, uh -huh. son como modismos. So. Es, es bueno tener ese vocabulario también. Sí, porque también hay unos, los modismos que usan las, las personas morenas allá, también los otros, los, los nativos, también los de ciertas localidades de Estados Unidos, porque no todos hablan igual lo que hablan con un acento distinto, como acá los, los capitalinos hablan de una forma, los migueleños de otra, los de la Unión hablan diferente y así. That same thing in the States, yes. Mm -hmm. They have different accents. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else, Carlos? Solamente. Okay, so thank you so much for staying. I hope that you sleep well and have a better day tomorrow <laughs> and yeah. see you in class. Okay, thank you. Okay, so see you tomorrow. Sleep well. Thank you. Good night. Bye.